Now, this constant, this fine structure constant, can't be wished away because you don't like its units. Okay? It's a central mystery in the constants of nature that's dimensionless, making it a geometric number like pi, except for we don't have the geometry it belongs to. Reality has another important level to access geometrically that we're completely at this point blind to. Okay? Pi, if you've gotten familiar with pi, it's a very, very rich geometric number that gives us a lot of connections to many different geometric stories. This is another number like that, and it's a number that shows up in chemistry all over the place, in the constants in nature all over the place. If you take one constant and divide it by another constant, it'll show up many times that way. So this number is extremely important, as he points out. Yeah. Paul Dirac famously said in his office, people would come approach him and say, I've got this theory of everything I want you to check out. And he would just kind of look over his shoulder and say, does it explain the fine structure constant? Then come back when it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested at all unless you can explain that constant. So he was really focused on it. Now he's been called the strangest man, but uh, he's also incredibly important for our modern formalism, right? And for the Dirac equation and so on. It's a uh, really important to focus or keep in mind if we're trying to make sense of the puzzles of reality, of the hard-earned data points of the structure we've discovered so far, which have all been gotten by extending ourselves past our natural senses, by using experiments and the best experiments we can actually design so far, the best equipment we've designed. That's a central mystery to be made sense of. Now, it's, as I mentioned, found in many places in the concepts of nature, but you can measure it using the quantum Hall effect or the anomalous magnetic moment electron. You can use atomic interferometry or the recoil measurement method. You can also use it from the atomic unit of velocity. There's many, many more on that. I think probably over 100. Okay? So there's many relationships that it indirectly comes from, but built in. Now, this is a bit of numerology. People have been fascinated to try to come up with a way to get close to that number, right? Anyway, because we don't have a method. So if you come up with anything that reproduces this number, we're interested to see what, what can I try to get from that? What sort of information might that be telling us? Now, I'm not telling you that this equation is anything more than a hodgepodge and put together of numbers, but I'm telling you it's kind of famous, called Weiler's constant, for being able to get five of the significant digits right. It gets the first five parts of this number, and then it gets them wrong after that. Okay, but the first five numbers right, and that's really good compared to all the other attempts. Okay. It's been called a, a number in search of a theory. Okay, and uh, of course, we don't know if there's anything um, profound in there. When I look, I don't see anything particularly profound. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe you can see it. But it is interesting that it gets us close to the number. Here's the reported number on CODATA right now. Okay, with the, with the error bars, the, the last two nine, three digits, they have an error of plus or minus 11 on them. Okay. There's also uh, other measurements. In fact, the more recent measurement in 2020, um, mm -hmm. atop the second line here, and then there's several other ones that list the number and the error bars. So you can see this has been studied many, by many people. There's even more than this. These are some of the recent ones, um, people measuring these different things. But in each case, notice that they have several digits they all agree on. Okay? So the error bars tell you how, where our ignorance is, but we certainly know this thing to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and, the, and with error on the last two. So we have nine confident digits and two not-so-confident digits, okay? Now we enter some of the work, finally, that we've come to. And I should say that I didn't come up with this equation out of my mind. Someone had uh, sent me, someone read Einstein's intuition and knew I was after this sort of understanding, and they found a blog online where somebody had just noted that this equation, um, without the minus mp on the end, gets us really close to a solution, a, a number that's really close to the fine structure constant, closer than Weiler's constant does. Okay, so I was immediately interested, and I reworked the equation. They had a, a different square root power of this, and so on. But I rewrote it this way, which looks simpler to me. In fact, if you take off, ignore the right hand side, and get rid of the two pi in the denominator, it's just an equation for hyperbola. Okay, a hyperbolic structure, and then we're, at, we're dividing the volume element, the cubic element, by 2 pi. And i to the j, i is the square root of negative 1, and j is also the square root of negative 1, but it's orthogonal to i, and then to the negative pi over 2. Without the, the Planck mass on the right-hand side, 
And like I said, you get a number that's really close. I think you get six significant digits, one more than Weiler's number. So I wanted to ask, what do you have to change this equation by to get it completely? To get all the digits we currently have. Of course, what you can easily do, you put a plus X on the right-hand side, and then plug in the actual number, sorry, plus Y on the right-hand side, since we already have X's here. Plug in the actual number for X. And what it spit out was minus the Planck mass. Okay, the same power, 10 to the negative eight, the same few, uh, first digits that we have. And immediately I got excited. Okay, I think I just found a clue. I think I found a very important clue. First of all, this equation doesn't look like random hodgepodge to me. We're talking about a hyperbolic structure. It's got quaternion structure and it has a gap in the quaternion structure of a certain scale. And the scale picked for the gap in hyperbolic structure, what we've been calling classically the mass gap, is exactly equal to the Planck mass. This was very, very exciting. More importantly, it took me a long time to notice all these features because I was after the fine structure constant. I wasn't necessarily after for all the other features it connects to because I didn't get that yet. But there's four solutions in this equation, not just one. So it kicks out four different solutions. Let's look at them right here. On the bottom, we have Zhe one is a solution. This is the number that, Fe that Feynman was talking about the square root of what we currently call the fine structure constant, but he called the square root version of the fine structure constant. And then J2 is another solution. If you put it in the equation, it kicks out inequality. J3 and 4 are two other solutions, and notice they're complex. They're two-dimensional numbers, a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, all four of those solutions taken together as a product returns 2 pi. As a sum, when we add all four of those solutions to that hyperbolic construction together, we get zero. And when we take their quadrants, which is the sum of their squares or the difference of their squares, both count. If we take the sum of the squares, we get negative four pi. If we take the difference of the squares, we get positive four pi. Okay. That's another thing that made the hair stand up in the back of my neck. <laughs> all of a sudden, we have a direct connection to things that we know much more about. In fact, this is now a partition structure relating to two pi and a projected sphere and a balance coming from a hyperbolic structure. A picture's starting to form here. All right? Another really interesting thing, the bottom left, J1 squared, is equal to the fine structure constant to all of its digits currently known. Okay? And J1, the one that uh, Feynman called the fine structure constant, the square root of that, times by the Planck charge gives us the electron charge. So it's, this, the story we're after is a story for that either fine structure constant or Zhe one, however you want to call it. But all of a sudden, it's connecting to more than one thing, right? We're after one thing, the fine structure constant, but it's connecting to more than one already.